Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. And today I'm gonna to do a few sets of Romanian deadlifts, a little bit of shoulders and some triceps. Now, the funny thing is, is that uh, I usually don't do this, but I split my hamstring workout and my quadricep workout up into two different days. Now, I'm not doing lots of volume lately. Lately, I found that uh, doing more intense workouts, but, but shorter, is is better like if i do too much volume what will end up happening is that my appetite starts to go down and i notice that i'm not necessarily getting more benefit because once again and i've talked about this is that you can get stuck in the trap of just training to train you know training to for the sake of training or just burning energy and although you know this can have its place once in a while if you do it too much you can overtrain. you just burn your system out and you're not necessarily getting more results so what I've done lately is I've said, okay, I'm going to use heavier weights, some lower rep ranges uh, for, for certain exercises, especially like bench press and, and so forth. But um, by doing so, what I found is that my appetite has gone up and I, I feel like my, my physique is changing in a, in a positive way, right? I'm starting to get more pumpy and lumpy in a, in a certain way. So based on this premise is that, uh, you know, you always got to return back to intensity and, and, and strength is important, right? And whatever type of training is increasing your ability to be intense and, and to generate power through the muscle or, or intensity sometimes in strength endurance. I mean, I'm not saying, uh, you know, that strength endurance doesn't play a role. It plays a huge role as well in putting on muscle. But if you do too much volume, uh, you will burn out. That's, that's all I've noticed with myself. And the nice part is about appetite, right? You want to basically have an appetite. Now, a lot of people, they're like, oh yeah, I want to suppress my appetite because I want to cut and all that. Well, no, you actually want an appetite. This is called, called bodybuilding, not body anorexia. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is bodybuilding. You want to have an appetite, but eat the right foods. And by eating the right foods, then you will put on muscle. So that's how it works. You know, it's, it's pretty simple, really. But, um, yeah, I, I notice that sometimes if I work out too much, and, and here's an, a thing that you might not know, and if you don't know it, I'm going to share it with you. That's why I make the video. But basically, when I was playing hockey, I was burning a lot of calories. I was, I was, you know, skating four or five times a week for about an hour at a time, you know, super intense workouts. And then I'd be lifting weights about, you know, three, four, five days a week, depending on, you know, how I felt and whatever, and, and what I tweaked at the hockey game, you know, that day or not. But what I found was I just couldn't eat enough. So I start losing, losing weight, right? I'd lose like muscle weight as well as, as fat weight just from skating because I just couldn't eat enough protein. I found it just so difficult to get the food down because the appetite was so low, right? So regardless of whether this is a cortisol thing because of the stress that's created from adrenaline, from competition, or from doing too much endurance work or whatever it is, I noticed that when I do too much cardio or too much uh, energy exertion, my appetite actually goes down. And I would have thought that it would go up. But when I do more power things, right? Like such as heavy lifting or sprinting type ideas, right? You know, things that are more associated with power, but not necessarily exhaustion. I notice that my appetite goes up and my body becomes more anabolic. So I remember a lot of people asking me back in the day, they'd be like, oh, how long do you work out? You know, how long are your workouts? You must be working out all day long or whatever. And I'd be telling them that, no, my workouts are around, you know, 40 minutes to, to an hour tops, you know, and they'd always be surprised by this. But the thing is, is that there was intensity going on during those workouts. I was lifting four or 500 pounds on the squat, if not more sometimes, right? And bench pressing 315 for reps. So I was always pushing the weight and trying to uh, exhaust myself in three, four sets tops, right? Uh, sometimes I do two exercises, so three sets of one and two sets of another. But that's about it. I was just trying to exhaust myself with super uh, large amounts of intensity, and then I'd move on to the next body part but I wasn't in the gym for, you know, two hours at a time or two and a half hours and stuff, right? That, that, that was just counterproductive. I, I couldn't keep that type of intensity and then work out that long. It like took all my energy just to get those two or three sets of heavy weight. And then I was pretty much done, right? So basically my point is, is finding the sweet spot of volume and intensity is important. And if you go too much into the volume or too much into the endurance, you're gonna notice that the body starts to adapt to something totally different at that point instead of strength and muscle mass that's that's really my point you know so 
yeah, doing, doing lots of volume can, can work against you. you know. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to do some Romanian deadlifts. Now, now the thing is with Romanian deadlifts, I don't do Romanian deadlifts super heavy. Uh, you know, I did squats for, at four plates, you know, 400 pounds yesterday. So I'm going to do 225 for Romanian deadlifts. If I feel good, maybe I'll go a little bit heavier just for fun. But I find I get so sore from Romanian deadlifts, no matter what weight I use, that, uh, uh, that, that I get kind of messed up. So, but that's okay. Hey, we're here to get messed up, right? As long as it's a good messed up, then, then that's what we'll do. So yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go heavier. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Now, just for purposes of explanation here, I am not saying you need to split your leg workout up into two different days. I'm by no means saying that. I'm only doing it in this one circumstance because I just felt like it. Honestly, that's it. So yeah, it goes in alignment with uh, the one rule I say to you guys is to break your own rules sometimes. So that's, that's what I did. So for purposes of low volume, I felt like just doing something a little differently. And that was what I did. So Romanian deadlifts, here we go. Easy. Easy peasy. Let's go to 225. So one thing uh, a lot of people make a mistake with, and, and this is something I did when I first started training legs, is that uh, I applied the same failure principle to movements that included the lower back uh, as I would apply to, say, bicep training, right? And what I mean is that a lot of times when you're training biceps, you'll take the set right to failure. So deep into failure, you know, you, you can't possibly do another, another rep, right? But you always have to remember whenever you're doing stuff with the lower back, <clears throat> the same muscles that will get exhausted are also the same muscles that are protecting your spine. So you always have to make the definition of failure different when you're squatting, bent over rowing, doing deadlifts. The, the definition has to be different than when you are doing something as safe as a bicep curl, right? So with anything that includes the lower back, what you wanna do is make sure that your set is done before your lower back fails. Like you get a feel for it when you can't maintain the proper arch in the lower back anymore. That is when the set is done. If the set continues through that, you're playing with fire. You know, it's only a matter of time before you tweak something or herniate a disc or, or whatever. And I did that when I was deadlifting as a kid. So, uh, you know, most of you guys know this, I mean, but I always feel the need to say this, right? Cause you know, people just see like ball busting type of intensity on the internet and they're like, yeah, you just gotta be intense to be intense. Well, yeah, there's a time and place and there are certain uh, arenas where you can be that intense. But if you apply that in the wrong place, under the wrong circumstance, you can, you can cause yourself a problem, right? So obviously, yeah, the better strength or isometric strength you have in the lower back, the better as far as you'll be able to take that set into a deeper level of failure for your hamstrings and stuff. But if you jump the gun or for some reason, like say for instance, today, my lower back is a bit tired from heavier squats yesterday. Uh, and then say, I push too hard on the deadlift today, that might cause a problem, right? So you have to always pay attention to this stuff. It's, uh, you can't just let yourself go blind for a day or two and just go through the motions because if you do, then that's when you get blindsided, right? So, but anyway, it's, uh, yeah, let's do a set. It's 225 now. I just put on an extra plate. Oh, it feels good. I like that. Not bad. A little bit of higher reps. I like to do uh, medium to higher reps with deadlifts. I know that seems contradictory to what I just said in the earlier part of this video, but uh, yeah, some movements, if I go too heavy, then it just strains things. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have those movements, right? Now, another mistake that uh, people make when it comes down to exercise form, right? So for instance, the Romanian deadlift I was just doing there. Sometimes people will look at my upper back 
here and they'll say, oh, that upper back isn't parallel to the floor, so you're not going low enough. But what you want to do is look at the pivot point around the hip, right? And, and if I have an arch in my lower back, right, and my upper back is here, it doesn't mean that I'm still not at a, a pretty aggressive angle in the hip. So, right, so if I bend over like this, I can arch the back, upper back might be here, but I'm still getting a pretty good angle on that hamstring, right? So it's, it's not about how low can you go. That, that's the other mistake people make. It's, it's more about how much tension can you put on the muscle efficiently, and sometimes an extra stretch transfers that tension onto different places, such as the tendon insertions and so forth, but not necessarily the muscle belly. So it's, it's, it's one of those things where uh, you want to use the body efficiently, like I keep saying, right? It's, it's more about efficient movement. And yeah, you can, you can leave your yoga stretches for the yoga time. You don't have to be doing that with heavy weight. That's just not the right thing. Otherwise, I'd say do the splits with a, with a bar with 200 pounds on your back. You know, why not just do that for your exercises? I mean, we all know that that would be uh, too awkward and it would not necessarily translate into more muscle mass gains, although it looks impressive on an Instagram post, right? So that's the thing, uh, a lot of people get caught up in that, right? It's like, how low can you go? It's like, you know, and, and I'll talk about a guy that made a dumb comment this week uh, after I've finished this one set here. Go a bit heavier probably 275 and 225 i'll go heavier now so sometimes with lower back type stuff uh there will be times where i allow myself an extra warm-up set so uh this is important so what i'm going to say is that uh i see some guys and, and you know a lot of a lot of things they're saying is is true right they're saying hey your warm-ups are aren't failure sets and you don't want to take them uh, so much to failure, so close to failure that you're burning out for your heavy sets. And that's true, 100%. But the disclaimer on all of this is this, okay? If you feel for some reason your body is not warming up properly or it's not getting enough blood flow, then by all means do some extra warm ups. So there's the odd time where I'll, you know, put on a plate, do a couple warm up reps, you know, do 10, 20 reps, 30 reps. Then I'll put on two plates, do 20 reps, you know, and then I'll go to three plates, say I'm squatting, right? And then I'll do 10 reps and then I'll go to four plates. That sometimes will feel fine. But then there will be days where I'm like, oh, hamstring still feels tight or the lower back isn't feeling like it's perfectly aligned. It's almost like something needs to be clicked into place or something, you know, something like doing the twists and stuff and feeling my lower back and all the, the muscles in there, like I'll press them and then twist and put the back into place. I'll go through this whole process and I'm more than willing to do extra warm up sets until I feel confident that my body is ready for the next set. And so today you saw this with me. Today I felt pretty good on the first set with 225, but it still felt like the lower back wasn't perfectly primed into the right location yet. So I thought, okay, I'll do another set with 225. Even though if I was an, a strength Puritan, right? I'd be like, oh, I'm wasting all my energy. I need to, I need to take it to, you know, uh, to the next set because I, I want to hold on to my energy for that intense set and just go heavy right away. But if you do this, and you're not feeling quite right, you will snap something, right? And that's the first thing you want to avoid is snapping something. That's the first thing. So a lot of you guys are aware of the Sam Sulik type videos. He makes great videos. He's a nice guy. I don't agree with his lifestyle choice, but he seems like a nice dude, right? But he just tweaked a pec the other day on inclines. Now this can happen to anybody, right? But of course we know the guys who are not natural, it happens to them a lot more because of many various reasons. Uh, but uh, I won't get into them right now. But the bottom line is, is that, uh, you know, he's, he's doing what most bodybuilders would do, like any of us, right? He's chasing numbers. He's trying to basically get that extra rep on that heavy set. So he's conserving energy in his warm-ups, right? 
And then, of course, the last chest workout he did, he tweaked his chest. Well, he's only doing three reps on, on 315, three reps on, on you know, 365 or whatever it is. He didn't necessarily warm up the area the way I would have. But you know what? Sometimes it boils down to what's going on in your own individual circumstance. So I'm not saying that he's doing everything wrong. I'm just saying that it's good to exercise a bit of caution uh, if things are not feeling quite right, you know, uh, and, and sometimes, you know what, sometimes we do have a limitation of awareness, right? We all get blindsided by what we're not aware of, you know, and so this is an awareness growth process. But yeah, if you're going to basically talk about uh, what's important, injury prevention first is important, second is gains, right? Because if you got a bunch of injuries, what's the point? You won't be able to train anyway, you know, so, so yeah, I did an extra set of Romanian deadlifts at 225. Now I'm going to do a set with 275. Oh, feels pretty good. Ah, see that felt nice and easy. I could go, I could go three plates honestly on this, but I just know that <laughs> my hamstrings get so sore no matter what I do, so I'm going to not go too heavy, but <laughs> Uh, maybe in the next workout I do hamstrings, maybe I'll go heavier. We'll see, but... So, uh, I'm gonna get into a comment that was made this week and uh, obviously made by... Well, okay, this guy said they were, they're were they an advanced bodybuilder, but uh, obviously uh, not not 100%, right? Because <laughs> whenever you get somebody that says, uh, it, you know, basically an absolute when it comes down to how an exercise should be performed, regardless of who's doing it, they might present themselves as an expert, but they're not really. I mean, because mastery has to do with uh, applying something to an individual circumstance, not necessarily just saying, hey, this is what worked uh, for me, and that means everybody has to be like me, right? You know? So uh, this person said, dumbbell presses are just meant, this is what he said, they said, just meant so that you can go down lower than barbell presses. And that's why you have to go lower on them Otherwise, uh, you're not doing the movement right. Uh, but the thing is, is that dumbbell presses aren't about just going down lower, although that can be the case for some people. But I've found that going down too low obviously just kills the joints, irritates the shoulders, causes all sorts of problems. Uh, doesn't give me any better chest development. I've tested it, right? All I do is get end up, you know, end up getting irritated shoulders and stuff. Uh, so when I do go down deeper, I will do that with lighter, lighter workouts, like super light stuff. But once I get into the five rep range or seven rep range and stuff, you're going to see me be a bit more conservative because that's safer, right? Uh, also, dumbbells are not just for going deeper. A lot of times it's mostly about the muscles that come into play because you can bring the hands closer as you come up and then wider apart as you come down. Not to mention, you can orient the elbows in certain areas to uh, navigate each limb individually rather than being tied to a bar. So that's why some people with existing shoulder injuries, sometimes they don't get as irritated uh, as the barbell press because the barbell press locks them into a certain position of movement where dumbbells allow more free movement. But the main point of dumbbells is that the pecs do pull across the chest. So anytime you even arch just a little bit, just even a little bit like this, you're getting a little bit more pec development as opposed to just going straight up and down. You know, one could argue that anyway. So yeah, I, I do everything. The reason why, the reason why I do it is because I've done things. <laughs> I have done things in my life. You know, I've trained a lot of different ways, right? And I've tweaked things and I've learned the hard way, you know, and, uh, yeah, people keep thinking that uh, they make a comment and somehow I'm going to be enlightened about what they're saying and that somehow I'm going to do things <laughs> their way where they don't realize that I spent three and a half decades in the gym and I did things 
their supposed right way for periods of time and messed myself up or got less results or, you know, just didn't, it just basically was like a, a futile, a futile exercise, right? You know, doing certain things was just futile. The, the movement became more awkward or more dangerous and it didn't result in any more muscle mass. So what's the point? And it didn't result in any more comfort of the body. So this is the difference between me and some of the dudes on the internet. And, and you know, you see some of the guys that are pretty smart that, you know, like you'll watch some bodybuilders out there, they're pretty smart. Like they'll say, hey, listen, you know, I do this because my muscle feels like it's stressed out and my back feels good the next day, right? And so they'll take their joints into account as they're stressing the muscles, right? But the, the crazy people or, or the unconscious people, you know, you could say people with a severed brain stem, like they're not necessarily connected to their body. They can't really feel anything, right? <laughs> they're probably the same people that they walk into a gym and you say, hey, let's do some squats. They're like, oh yeah, I feel my biceps getting a really good pump from these squats, right? <laughs> like they don't have a good uh, connection with their legs or something. Uh, these types of people will push every part of their body into failure, not realizing that some parts don't come back once you hit failure, right? Like, like say you blow out four or five discs in your lower back, you don't come back from that. You know what I mean? That's not just a two day rest period. That's like, that's like a, a decade rest period before you can come back into the gym if you ever can, right? So you always want to pay attention to where these forces are playing out. And that means your exercise technique, uh, uh, the types of exercise you choose and the weights and stuff. You, you just want to pay attention to that. And yeah, you're going to be dumb. Sometimes you'll be dumb. I mean, we're all dumb sometimes. Like we, we, we're not aware of certain things, right? You're not aware of what you're not aware of, you know, but only through vigilant awareness can you, can you constantly evolve and, and make, uh, uh, let's just say the necessary adjustments, but you're definitely not going to get the best training advice by listening to somebody in the comments that, you know, doesn't give a shit about you or maybe has never even trained before. They just read a few books. Who knows? Right. All right. Let's do another set. And this feels good. Now on those Romanians, I could have easily went to 315, 365, and, and maybe I will. I haven't pushed myself in that movement for a long time, honestly. I haven't really, uh, and that's on me. You know what I mean? That's on me. Because usually what I've been doing is conserving my hamstring power for my quad day with my squats. And because I'm such a hamstring dominant squatter, and I use so much lower back when I squat, that uh, I find that sometimes the Romanian deadlift and the squat, uh, let's just say they can interfere with each other uh, but at the same time, if you're good at both, they will also help, right? Especially with the way I squat. So, uh, yeah, so sometimes uh, I'm trying to manage uh, the healing capacity of the body and, and, and say, okay. Uh, so, so one way that I do this, one strategy that might be interesting to you is that, say today I do some heavy Romanian deadlifts, right? Uh, what I will do is, uh, in two days from now, when I train legs again, I'll train one-legged squats, right? because my hamstrings would be pretty tight. So if I go to squat, I've noticed that if your hamstrings are really tight and then you go to squat, your lower back is a little bit more in jeopardy, right? Because with the hamstrings, when they're tight, they'll pull the lower back into a rounded position. Now I've managed to really awareness myself through this. Like I can still squat with tight hamstrings, but back in the day, I tweaked myself quite a bit because I wasn't as aware as I am now to know what to look out for and, and to know where to limit myself and, and so forth, you know? So, yeah, but yeah, mostly that, that's one technique I'm doing. And then the other thing I'm doing a lot of times is I'll squat and then I'll do my Romanians on the exact same day. And maybe I'm not as strong with the Romanian deadlifts, but at least it's not really interfering with my, uh, uh, let's just say with my hamstrings being tight during my squat day, because I'll squat first and then I'll do the Romanians after. But, you know, it's, it's a matter of always being aware. It's not about finding the right structure. It's more about what structure is working for you based on what your body's telling you. And if you're paying attention, you'll always figure it out, right? 
Uh, another thing is like I've been, I fought this cold about three weeks ago and it comes back in waves a little bit, right? And uh, <laughs> I was just guided to drink some burdock root last night. Uh, burdock root, it's like a dried burdock root, I don't, if you look it up. But anyway, it turns out this stuff's supposed to be good for sore throats and colds and stuff. So anyway, happy accident, right? Sometimes you just do certain things that are happy accidents. Uh, as you just work on this awareness, you're not always going to have bad accidents, you know? So, so when you're not aware, you have a lot of unhappy accidents. When you're aware, you tend to have a lot of happy accidents. I guess that's my point. Yeah, so anyway, let's do a few sets of incline uh, skull crushers. That's, that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna warm up with the 25s here. Yeah, it's easy. I find that uh, skull crushers are great, but like I said before in the past, if you have an unstable shoulder, sometimes that will play a role of uh, uh, not being able to take your triceps into as deep a failure as you could with, say, maybe a different movement like close grip bench or maybe cables, like, you know, overhead cable extension. Sometimes that can be easier on the shoulder joint. So training at home always has these challenges, right, where you have limited equipment or limited space. Because I've had you know, I've had companies reach out to me and say, hey, we want to give you some equipment, just to advertise our stuff or whatever. But I honestly don't have the space for it because I have to park the car in the garage because rats have eaten my, my truck twice or three times actually, and uh, they eat my car. Now I've taken care of this with the truck. I put some wire mesh around the truck and I have some rat traps out there and stuff. But my car, you know, a rat got in there one night and, you know, bit the wires and that was about a year and a half ago. And I was like, had to repair that, so now I don't take any chances. The car goes in the garage at night. So anyway, uh, no problems anymore, but that, that limits my capacity of how much gym equipment I can have, right? Or what I can do. So one of you guys has to sponsor the channel uh, to, uh, to buy me a house just right next door to my house. And what we'll do is clear that entire house out. Actually, we'll tear it down and just build a gym. That's what we'll do. So let me know if one of you guys want to do that. So. Uh, you know, on that note though, uh, if you guys want a shirt like this, I have them on my website. Uh, this is The Great Art by Sam Weller. Thanks, Sam, if you're still tuning in these days. I know I see in the comments once in a while. Guy does awesome uh, comic book art, but anyway, he made this rendition of me getting attacked by trolls on the internet, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I wear the shirt from time to time. People look at me funny at the coffee shop because they're like, hey, you're wearing yourself on your shirt. What's, what kind of a guy does that? And, the guy that's too lazy to change after he leaves his home gym, that's, that's the guy. Okay. There we go. Now I could use the fifties, but the fifties, the technique becomes so ugly and so bad that it's just not, there's no point. So I'm using the forties right now. I think the 42s or 45s might be good, 42 and a half or something, but I don't have those. So I'm stuck with doing the forties, but what I'll do is a couple sets of this and then I'll go to close grip bench. And it's almost like a uh, pre exhaustion, right? Where you do an isolation movement for the triceps and then you go into a compound that heavily stresses the triceps so that works pretty good but again i'm not doing lots of sets i'm only going to do two sets of this maybe yeah two sets and then i'll go to close grip for a couple sets and then i'll be done that's it and then what i'll do is i'll come back later and do a couple sets of shoulders or something and and that's my workout for the day so i'm doing very short and intense workouts and yeah some days they're not as intense and then some days they are where i lift pretty heavy weight or i try to uh you know beat my 
previous six or seven rep record, you know what I mean? With whatever weight I'm using. <laughs> <clears throat> Now, some of you guys ask me like what supplements I use and the truth is I don't use supplements a lot. I, I'll take some zinc magnesium aspartate here and there because I know I need zinc from time to time. I'll take some ashwagandha, you know, in herb form and I just mix it in with my protein shakes, you know, so I'll obviously have protein powder in my oatmeal or, or protein shakes. And then I just bought some BCAAs the other day that have some glutamine and some taurine in there along with some quercetin, vitamin C, and they're sweet mostly with stevia, so I like stuff like that, that's sweet with stevia. So yeah, like I'll, I'll, I'll drink BCAAs during my workout. Actually, I haven't found a lot of companies that are uh, going by my standards as far as they are sweet with stevia instead of sucralose and stuff, but there was one company that I ran into just recently, so I sent them a message and seeing if they want to sponsor the channel because I'm drinking their stuff anyway. So I figured, hey, why not get them to sponsor the channel, right? Uh, so we'll see what happens. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, BCAAs, I find that they, they really do work. And I'm positive there's some studies out there that support that, right? But I remember having an argument about seven or eight years ago in the gym with some, you know, pencil neck trainer that uh, was just looking at the present studies then and, and he would just cherry pick everything and say, oh, they're all, all useless. And it's just placebo because when you drink a sweet drink, you naturally have more energy when you're in the gym. I said, well, based on that logic, then when I drink my non-fat mocha, I should have just the same energy as when I drink BCAAs. But sometimes when I drink branched-chain amino acids, I feel like there's a longer sustaining energy that I get from them. I don't know why, but, uh, but yeah, it feels like I just have a longer period of time that I, I can train, you know, especially when I'm under a diet or I'm, I'm eating lower fat and stuff and I don't have as much food in my system. But anyway... Uh, it's something for everybody to try for themselves because the different people also respond differently to different supplements. So I, I, I encourage you though, if you haven't tried BCAs or, or drinking bone broth during your workouts or, you know, try these different things uh, because they, they do add uh, an interesting sort of, uh, let's just say interesting sort of energy, right? I've talked about stinging nettle before too, stinging nettle infusions. And I made a video on this channel about that. And you'll notice that by drinking infusions, like herbal infusions, your health will go to a different level. Like I just talked about drinking burdock today. I drank a burdock infusion, but I drink stinging nettle infusions from time to time. But the bottom line is to keep the faith that there are solutions to any problem that you do have. There, there, there's probably a solution out there. You just don't look towards people that just give you this little box of solutions. Like there's probably all this stuff that this person you're talking to doesn't even know it exists. And by investigating these different aspects of health, you may get your answer, you know? All right, let's do a couple sets of close grip. So another thing to keep in mind is that no matter what movement you're doing, it's, it's good to do a warm-up set for that movement. So I just trained triceps on, on the incline, but before doing heavier sets of close grip, I still did a warm-up set with one plate. So that's, uh, it's, it's a precautionary thing. You don't have to do it, but it's, it's something that I am in the habit of doing for sure. So uh, I noticed that there are always unexpected 
coordination issues with different movements and the more prepared you are for that movement the safer it is right so uh, you know one, one thing that happens is say your, your muscle is totally exhausted and then you go to a different movement right away you'll notice there's that calibration moment right uh, you you help offset some of the the risk involved with those calibrations especially when working with heavier weight or compound lifts and so forth so I mean, I, I never have any issues with my elbows or anything, but if you do, you, you definitely want to make sure that you're warming, you're warming up, you know. What I've found is certain movements seem to respond really well to heavy weight, where it's like they feel like all the tension just, you, you just can feel it, right? So I can feel like the close grip, like I feel so much tension on the tricep in different areas than say the overhead tricep extension. So that's the great thing about it is that, uh, you know, a lot of people, they get in arguments about what is the best exercise and then this is the best one, that's the best one. Well, again, this is all going to be relative depending on the person, right? Uh, but at the same time, there's going to be certain movements which are great for certain purposes or if done a certain way you get a better result right so the, the truth is is that you're, you're trying to stimulate different areas of the muscle and yeah you want to get the best bang for your buck you want to do the movements that are going to give you the best bang for your buck but on the flip side of that is that there are people that are trying to get too much done in an exercise so i just had a comment and a guy was talking about that overhead presses are better than than just shoulder presses for beginners because they get they involve the core and the lower back and the upper back and you know, all that stuff and i would say that standing overhead press is almost a different movement than seated overhead press honestly it's almost a different movement because there's so many other muscles that become the weak link instead of the delts right uh, you know you notice that you can't lift as much if you're doing a strict overhead press like standing overhead press as when you're seated. And, and there's a reason for that. I mean, it's just you're not involving uh, as much stabilization when you're in the seated sort of position. And, and I talked about this in another video where sometimes honing in the force on a certain area becomes possible when you don't have to stabilize so much. So bodybuilding is full of these uh, dichotomies or conflicting sort of idealisms, right? So that's why it's important to break your own idealisms because I could see the standing shoulder press being a great movement, but I could still see somebody maybe not getting the same delt development they would if they did a seated. And I remember reading an article, and I can't remember which pro bodybuilder this was, but he talked about they used to always do standing overhead press, but once they went to seated overhead press, their delts started to blow up. They started to get actually better delt development from that because they could push deeper into failure and they weren't, uh, you know, limited by the, the factors that I talked about, uh, you know, stabilization. Also the neck muscles come into play more so when you're doing uh, standing shoulder press and so forth. So be careful when it comes down to making absolute rules because sometimes those rules will crucify you. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, they apply maybe in a couple places, but they don't apply everywhere, you know? And then that's the thing is, so you want to, you want to keep that open mind. I always say this and I'll, and I'll keep saying it till the day I die. You want to keep that open mind uh, in, in some cases, right? So, so always my answer to you is try things, see what happens instead of holding on to your dogma or holding on to whatever propaganda you got inside your own mind going on, right? You know, so yeah, and, and then you'll land on uh, some sort of mastery of yourself and then you will definitely know what works and what doesn't work. But uh, it will be based on reality and based on actual experience and, uh, and not by uh, overly attaching to what has worked. And, and, and because if you attach to what used to work, sometimes you don't find out what's working now. And, and that's, that's the curse, right? That's the curse of expertise. So yeah, I've been there and uh, continue to be there and continue to traverse these waters, right? Every day you're somebody different, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, <laughs> you gotta move with that, right?
So yeah, I hope this helps you in your training, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalgalantbodybuilding.com. Mountain. <laughs>